Last time I built a device that balances using a reaction wheel. I described how I used the PID controller with an extra observation controller to make it balance, so check out the previous video for more info on that. A reaction wheel moves a mass in either direction at a varying velocity in order to balance a device at a set angle which is measured by an inertial measurement unit. The reaction wheel can only exert a force when it accelerates or decelerates, so if we try to balance off centre then the wheel would have to constantly increase in velocity until it reaches its limit, at which point the device can no longer balance. I built a device with one reaction wheel which balances in only one axis, however some devices use multiple reaction wheels to balance in multiple axes. I've also built a number of robots that balance using control moment gyroscopes. These are distinctly different because they use a constantly spinning constant velocity mass which is actively rotated in a control axis. This exerts a force in a perpendicular axis which allows the device to balance. This effect is called gyroscopic precession and I also talked about this in lots of previous videos. Although a reaction wheel and a gyroscope can both exert a controlled force in a set direction, they do this in quite different ways. However, the reaction wheel spins sometimes, so it'll also have some gyroscopic precession effect if it is rotated while spinning, and this may cause some unwanted effects. As well as my previous one wheel gyroscope balancing robot, I also built another balancing robot with one two axis actively driven omni wheel, which you can check out in my channel. So, in this video, I'm going to attempt yet another one wheel balancing robot using at least one reaction wheel. Firstly though, I wanted to see how much space I have for my driving wheel, so I extended the stick my reaction wheel balances on to make it taller. After some PID retuning, it looks pretty good, so now it's time to print some parts. Just a quick ad from my 3D printing sponsor, thanks to Lolzbot for supporting my channel with 3D printers. Thanks to 3D Fuel for the filament for this project and lots of other projects, so check out my channel for more 3D printing projects and check out 3dfuel.com. So we have a new drive wheel for this which has a bearing in each end, it has a 3U printed T5 pulley attached to it and a TPU tyre so it runs in the middle. And it can tip either way and there's quite a bit of clearance there so it won't get grounded when the robot leans on its reaction wheel axis. The motor that's going to drive that is quite overpowered, it's a 1500 watt brushless motor and it's a Turning G6374 149 kV motor, I've used these quite a few times before. So we're going to take off the old base with the tall stick and put on a new base so we can mount the motor and the wheel and the belt drive. So that just screws onto the existing assembly and has some new holes for mounting. Of course one of the things to be mounted is the motor which fits onto a bracket screwed onto the bottom of the new base plate and that's mounted with the supplied screws. On the other end of the motor there's an extension shaft which fits into a bearing and into a plate that's also going to hold one half of the wheel. On that plate is an encoder so I can position the motor accurately and that's an 8192 CPR encoder. So the wheel fits right in there with its belt drive and another plate on the other side so we can put an axle through and we can run that wheel nice and smoothly on the bearings embedded into each side of the wheel. So now we should be able to drive backwards and forwards like a normal balancing robot and use the reaction wheel to balance side to side and make the whole thing balance on one wheel. And to do that I've got a number of components which are basically from the last part mounted on the back. And that includes an O-Drive 3.6 brushless motor driver that handles the encoders and the motor power, an Arduino Mega 2650 that's more than capable of making this balance, and we've also got some batteries, a 6S LiPo to power the wheels and the brushless motors, and also a USB boost bank to power the electronics. And we've also got the IMU mounted on the top as we had before. But before we carry on with that, it's time for a quick ad from the video's sponsor, which is JLC PCB. JLC PCB are at the forefront of the PCB manufacturing industry and they provide high quality low price PCBs. It's easy to order from JLC PCB, just select your shipping destination and click on quote now and upload a Gerber file. The JLC PCB website will show a preview of the board and then you can select various options for manufacturing. Save it to your cart and enter your shipping information. JLC PCB currently have an offer where you can get 5 1 to 4 layer PCBs for just $2 with free SMT assembly. JLC PCB ship worldwide, they have fast build time so you can get your PCBs in as little as 3 to 5 business days. 
The JLC store also sells PCB coupons and offers free PCB designs and 3D designs. The ordering process is very easy at JLC PCB, so use the link in the description to this video to check it out now. I've tuned up the PID controller to make it balance back to front just like a normal balancing robot and that was pretty easy to do. So we can see that it's now actually balancing back to front and side to side using both that wheel and the existing reaction wheel. The kitchen floor is quite smooth though so it goes quite fast backwards and forwards and there's nothing to actually make a position hold at the moment so it does kind of wander away if it wants to. I'm not seeing too much change in yaw though which I thought I might get from the gyroscopic precession of the reaction wheel. On carpet it's a different story because we've got the natural damping of the soft carpet that stops it running away in its front to back axis. I've also added some more nuts to all the bolts on my reaction wheel that gives them a bit more mass and it means that reaction wheel has more effect at stabilising the robot now we've got the extra motor and the battery and everything else on there. So that seems to be working pretty well actually, pretty happy of how well this balances and it's better than my two axes active omni wheel robot that I did a couple of weeks ago. That robot could actually slide sideways to balance and that's because it had an active omni wheel where the little wheels around the circumference of the big wheel are driven by another motor so check that video out. Both of these robots seem to balance okay but neither of them can really steer because they have no way to turn in yaw. I was thinking about adding another reaction wheel to this one to make another reaction force to turn it but I actually decided to do something else to make a reaction force. Yep, it's some ducted fans. These are 80mm ducted fans with brushed motors with just two wires so they're easy to drive and I've made these mounts with a base so I can stick them onto the sides. So with the addition of the NRF24 L01 radio chip and a motor driver we can now use the OpenDog 3 remote to run those fans. One is going backwards when the other one goes forwards which is not terribly happy about but it should be enough to push air and cause it to rotate okay to steer. I can also drive backwards and forwards with the stick on the remote which is just offsetting the set point and causing it to lean backwards or forwards and then it drives to catch itself. We are seeing some movement in yaw because of that reaction wheel and the gyroscopic precession when the robot is moving and so is the reaction wheel. But now if I run those fans, it works better if I drive at the same time because otherwise there's quite a lot of friction with the carpet on that wheel. But I can just about steer the robot and drive backwards and forwards and it balances side to side. So that seems to do everything that I wanted. It is a bit hit and miss though and sometimes it can't balance itself. But I'm pretty happy that I've managed to make a one wheel robot that I can drive around and steer. I'm not sure if the reaction wheel would have been better for steering than the fans. Those EDFs aren't particularly happy running backwards. So I also think that one of them is more efficient which is pushing it in one direction depending on which way I try and steer. But that seems to be working pretty well. It is a bit temperamental though and there are various reasons for that. Um, so sometimes a few weird things happen and it suddenly loses it completely and goes shooting off. I think one of the issues is that that reaction wheel isn't on the centre of rotation of the whole robot. It's slightly offset to the front and that means the whole robot has to lean backwards to compensate so that it can actually balance front to back. And that means the reaction wheel isn't totally upright when it's operating. I also think we could probably do with some more mass in it to help balance the whole thing. Now I've added all the extra stuff. One thing I'd like to try is building a bipedal robot that uses reaction wheels to stabilise itself. This is Gyrobot which doesn't use reaction wheels, it uses gyroscopes but essentially it moves its legs in fixed motions to walk and then it uses two pairs of spinning gyroscopes to balance and compensate for anything side to side or back to front and it's pretty good at walking and climbing over obstacles. So this is a bit like my previous one wheel balancing robot that used gyroscopes to balance side to side only it's doing it with a pair of legs. But could we do this with reaction wheels? So I'm not too unhappy with that, I'd like to develop the idea further, perhaps make a bigger machine with a bigger reaction wheel and of course as things get bigger they generally have more mass which means they have a higher point of inertia, essentially they can't move as quick for the same amount of force so that actually makes them easier to tune up. That's why the Sonic the Hedgehog robot works so well and looks so smooth because it was actually really big and quite heavy and that meant it was just easier to tune up 
and was easier to balance the same as if you balance a stick and you put a heavy weight on the top it's much easier to balance than if it's not got the heavy weight and it can thrash around so I'm probably going to do some more development on this and probably gyroscopes as well for now I'm going to publish the CAD and code as I do of all the projects as open source and that's on github if you want to have a go or try and build another version of it or just see how the code works so if you want to support me through patreon or youtube channel membership then those links are in the description as well and patrons and youtube channel members can get access to all the videos up to a week early and sneak peeks of pictures of what's coming up so check that out all right that's all for now